this Celestron 114AZ-SR looks like a really good deal. Is it? Stay tuned, we'll find out. This is the Celestron 114AZ-SR Newtonian Reflector Telescope. It has a focal length of about 600 millimeters, costs somewhere in the neighborhood of about $150, and is an alt as mount, which means it goes up, down, left, right, and comes with a cell phone mount that I have on here now. After spending a little time using this scope and, and some views, played with it during the day and then a couple of nights, I have to admit, I think it's a pretty good scope for the money. There's a few things I don't like. The mount is a little shakier than I would like, and that's that's kind of important with a Newtonian reflector uh, because it it tends to amplify the vibrations pretty bad. This particular scope is not too bad. It works fairly well, and if you tighten it up really good and let it let it sit there and don't touch it you get pretty good views. The, you know, once it's stable, the views it produces are, are nice. I like the uh, focuser, even though it is pretty much all plastic, it's tight, smooth, and stays where you put it. And that's not something you see that often in, you know, what I would consider a very budget telescope. Now, Celestron does a really good job of making concessions where they have to, but not taking away too much from the scope. The fit and finish of the scope tube itself is pretty nice. It has very nice knobs in the back for adjusting the collimation. The eyepieces for this thing are remarkably good. Um, most of the cheap ones you see a lot of plastic in them. These are metal. The optics are not too bad. They give pretty good views. You could upgrade the, the eyepieces and get a little bit better views. So that's okay. The feel of the focuser, the way they've uh, done the knob, makes it really nice. Uh, adjusting tension on the knobs is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. It's I don't like the fact that you really got to, to apply tension to both sides uh, pretty well equally, or you get a little bit of slop in it. The mirrors seem really good. I'm impressed with those. I don't know how the all plastic uh, splines here are going to hold up over the long haul, but uh, from my views, they did a pretty good job. I didn't really have any problem with them. It takes a little bit of time to cool down and acclimate to the temperature, but that's pretty consistent with any kind of reflector, so I don't really hold that against it. The problem, or the biggest problem really, I should say, that I have with this scope isn't the scope itself. They've done a really nice job uh, cutting corners where it doesn't matter that much on the tube itself and putting money into where it really matters. The, the, finder, the little red dot finder scope is a little bit bigger than some of the cheap ones, and that makes it a whole lot easier to use. Um, I'm not just really sure that I wouldn't prefer an actual 90-degree finder that I could look at instead of looking to here. But that's okay. This does a really nice job. It's easy to use. It's easy to mount. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, once again, I love the knobs on the back for adjusting the collimation. That made that really easy. What I did not like is whoever did a fantastic job at only cutting corners where it really doesn't matter on the scope evidently took a day off when they designed the mount. The mount and tripod are... I guess serviceable would be the word that I would use. Um, it functions. I'm not overly impressed with it. I think they should have beefed up the, the top a little bit so that it, it didn't wobble quite as much. The legs twist uh, pretty bad, which is not something I'm really used to. Usually the, the legs may be a little wobbly, but they don't twist. These tend to twist and wobble and do all kinds of weird things. Of course, you could shorten it all the way down and 
that eliminates a lot of that problem. However, shorten it all the way down, when I'm going to view it on my knees, or I guess maybe you could have a small chair, and that would work. The range of motion is excellent. The smoothness is not too bad. Uh, once you get everything, you probably can't hear that, but there's a little bit of slack, no matter how you adjust this, a little bit of slop, like right here, where there's just not a whole lot holding it. So you, you put that in, and then this piece has a lot of slack in it too. So you really don't get a lot of tension on it. So there's a lot of motion here. So the, the only place that you get any kind of holding power is through the two knobs on the side. And I think I, I mentioned you really need to tighten those uh, pretty well equally. Otherwise, you, you get a little slop in it too. Now, uh, it sounds like I'm really knocking on the scope. And I kind of am. Budget reflectors are very hard to do. Budget refractors are a little better. However, Celestron uh, has done a, a reasonably good job at not cutting corners where it's really going to hurt you. So if you're interested in this scope uh, and you're a beginner and you don't mind fidgeting with stuff a little bit, this might be a, a good scope for you. For the price, it's not bad. It's one of the better compact reflector telescopes that I've seen in this price range. And a good portion of that is due to things like a really nice, uh, I mean, it's a cheap focuser, but it works really nice for what it is and the good eyepieces they put in it. That piece right there makes a huge difference. And they've, they've knocked that particular piece out of the ballpark. They've, they've done a really good job for the amount of money right there. Um, I also have to admit, just as a personal thing, I really like the carbon fiber fake whatever this is on the, the tube. It sounds like a metal tube and they've put some kind of wannabe carbon fiber uh, cover over it. And it looks and feels really nice. I know that has no bearing on anything, but it looks really good. Um, so anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, on the Celestron 114 AZ SR. Oh, and one other thing that I'll leave you with, the cell phone adapter. I don't know who thought this up. It's a neat theory. I see where they're going and you can actually make it work, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. It's 100% plastic which means the little screws and the ring on here are all plastic, which means it's probably going to crack after a couple of uses. But you have to kind of fidget with it to get it over the rubber eye cup. And then once you get it over the rubber eye cup, you can tighten it down. And I use that term loosely, no pun intended. Um, so once you get it reasonably tight, don't over tighten it because you will either strip it or crack it really quick. So, Snug it down a little bit, then you can slide your phone underneath these, line up the camera there, and it's fairly functional. Um, some of the problems you get into are with, once again, putting the, the rubber eye cup in here is a challenge. And then once you get it in, getting it snugged up without breaking anything is interesting. And then once you put a good sized cell phone on here, it tends to try and do this. I'm exaggerating, but it tries to peel it right off the eyepiece, which makes it hard to get a flush uh, view of the whatever object you're looking at. It's you should be, you know, nice and flat and you're not. You're tilted. And so it makes it really weird. Anyway, you can get a good uh, cell phone mount for just a few dollars uh, that'll work way better than this. So don't ding the, the telescope too bad for for this. But other than that, I, I kind of like it. So once again, there's my review of the Celestron 114 